Facts matter, folks. Last night's presidential debate was hard to watch at times, largely because there was no fact checking present. You had Dana Bash and Jake Tapper sitting there trying to keep it on the rails. Um, they created some some important um, infrastructure for this to be a productive debate in that they couldn't talk over each other. Their mics were muted and they largely respected that. I thought that was a positive thing. So credit where it's due. But what was really missing was fact checking. So the candidates were able to say whatever they wanted and there was no way to know if it was fact or fiction. Now this has real life implications. I actually watched last night's debate with a group of black Trump supporters and some independents, some folks who were on the fence, weren't really sure which way they were gonna go. So I was privileged to be in a space with some folks who were still undecided. This is rare. There are, most people know what they're gonna do at this point in this election, but I was there with the independents, with some undecided folks, and they were routinely misled by some of the claims that the former president made. I can't tell you how important this is, you know, so so I want you to watch this video from the facts fact first team at CNN. It's it's a little long, but it's one of the most important pieces of deep of debate recap coverage I can provide for you and I can encourage you to watch um, because you're going to encounter people who heard the things that the former president said, even some of the things you'll see in this video, even a, a couple of things that the current president Biden said that were factually dubious and untrue, perhaps. You're going to see those things and and you're going to be able to kind of ingest them and make a more for, in, informed decision um, when you go to the polls this fall. But perhaps more importantly, you're going to have information that you can share with the people in your circle. Um, former President Trump's uh, untruths will no doubt be regurgitated in everyday conversation that you have. So being tapped in on the actual truth, what's what's what actually happened, is going to be very important for you um, this summer so that you can have informed conversations with those around you. Now, I have to give a little bit of a preface. A number of people are saying that this is coming way too late, that it should have happened during the debate. But the second best time to watch this is right now. So let's watch. The Trump list, it is way, way longer. So deep breath. He said some Democratic states allow people to execute babies after birth, an egregious lie that is illegal in every state. He said everybody, even Democrats, wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. Roe was supported by two thirds of Americans, even more Democrats. He said every legal scholar wanted Roe overturned, abortion returned to the states. Legal scholars have told me directly this is not true. He said the U.S. currently has the biggest budget deficit ever. No, that happened under Trump in 2020. He said the U.S. currently has a record trade deficit with China that also happened under Trump in 2018. He said Biden personally gets a lot of money from China. Zero evidence of this. He said there were no terror attacks during his presidency. In fact, there were multiple attacks. He said Iran didn't fund Hamas, Hezbollah, other terror groups under his presidency. Iran, in fact, did. He said Biden wants to quadruple people's taxes. That is pure fiction. He said the U.S. has provided way more aid to Ukraine than Europe had. It's actually the opposite. He said the U.S. Provi pr has provided about 200 billion in Ukraine aid. It's closer to 110 billion. Uh, he said 18 or 19 million people have crossed the border under Biden. That is millions too high. He said many of these migrants are from prisons or mental institutions. His own campaign cannot corroborate this. He said Biden has only created jobs for illegal immigrants. Total nonsense. He said Nancy Pelosi turned down his offer of 10,000 National Guard troops on January 6th. There's no evidence she even got such an offer. It was the president, not Pelosi, who had the power to deploy the D.C. Guard. He said Pelosi now acknowledges she turned down the troops. No, her office tell me, tells me this claim is still a lie. He said he deployed the National Guard to Minneapolis in 2020. Actually, that was the Democratic governor. He spoke of, quote, ridiculous fraud in the 2020 election. Zero evidence of any widespread fraud. He said NATO was going out of business before he took office. Completely, clearly absurd. He said the U.S. was paying 100 percent of NATO before he came along. The U.S. made up about 71 percent of NATO defense spending, not 100. He said he, not Biden, is the one who lowered insulin prices in Medicare. He did it for some seniors, but Biden did it for far more. He said Biden indicted him. Again, no evidence Biden has had a personal 
prosecutorial role at any of these four prosecutions. He said Europe takes no U.S. cars, just not true. He spoke of food prices quadrupling under Biden. That's a wild exaggeration, though they are up. He said Biden made up the idea he called dead service members suckers and losers. No, the Atlantic magazine reported that, and then former Trump chief of staff John Kelly corroborated it. He said Biden called black people, quote, super predators for 10 years. Biden never once deployed that phrase, let alone for 10 years, though he did at least once speak of, quote, predators without specifying as about black people. He said his Trump tax cut was the largest in U.S. history. Not true, though, in fairness, Biden, Biden also said this. Uh, Trump said China and others stopped buying from Iran under him. China never stopped. He revived his pet lie. I don't know how many times I've done it, that he signed the Veterans Choice Program into law. Barack Obama did that in 2014. Trump signed an expanded version in 2018. And finally, Trump said Biden got rid of that veterans program. Biden has not done that. An incredible number of untruths told during that debate. It's actually mind boggling that a person is able to tell that many lies, misrepresent the truth <laughs> that efficiently. Yeah, that's it's incredible. Claims that Biden indicted him. Biden did not indict him. Claims that Biden only created jobs for immigrants. That's just not true. I think the thing that was shocking to me, and it came up among some of these black Trump supporters and independents at the event that I was at last night, was that Donald Trump claims that he got in contact with Nancy Pelosi and offered 10,000 troops on January 6th to prevent, from, prevent anything from happening. And that simply, there's no evidence whatsoever that that's true. And more importantly, it's the president's MO. It's the president's job to determine the deployment of troops in that regard in DC. Incredible. Now, one thing I'll say about January 6th is I was there. I was there on January 6th. I've made content, made videos about this in the past. I was present. I, I happened to live in the DC area at the time and I wanted to witness it with my own eyes. So I was there um, along with my wife and we saw what happened with our own two eyes. And it is remarkable whenever people like Donald Trump present these January 6th uh, convicted criminals as heroes. These folks are not heroes. They were out there beating police officers. I saw that with my own eyes. They were breaking the law. I saw that with my own eyes. They erected a gallows. I saw that with my own eyes. And just below the gallows were people singing Christian praise, uh, Christian songs without any cognitive dissonance. They were, the gallows were here. They were on their guitar singing praise and worship songs right next to it. And so I'm always amazed when I hear the former president um, frame January 6th as something that it wasn't. It was an insurrection and I witnessed it with my own eyes. The last thing I'll say about that is that I also saw people running to the Capitol and people running away from the Capitol. There were some folks there who were not at all interested in storming the Capitol that day, but there were plenty who were, and those people deserve what they have gotten. It's unfortunate that it's being framed in a political way when they simply broke the law. Trump claims that he had the largest tax cut in history. That is probably true for the top 1%, but certainly not true for the everyday American. Apparently, Joe Biden claimed the same thing, and that's just not true either. Fact checking matters is what I'm trying to say, folks. Facts truly matter. Um, there is an entire list of things. I'm glad we were able to watch the whole video. Uh, I would encourage you to go back, watch it again, rewatch this video so that you can know exactly what was happening during that debate. These facts are important. Let us know your thoughts about the debate down in the comment section. Listen, this is my last day here. Uh, I am retiring after, after today. It also happens to be my birthday today. So thank you for the very kind birthday wishes. Of course, thank you to Jesse, whose birthday was yesterday, uh, for having me sit in here as a guest host on the Dollamore Daily. My name is Garrison Hayes. You can keep up with my work. You can follow me um, down. You can subscribe to my channel. The, the, the link to my channel is right there at the top of the description. Would love for you to come over. Would really appreciate 
if you subscribed. I have some phenomenal videos coming up um, over the next few weeks that I'm really excited to drop. So make sure you get subscribed. Now we're gonna be talking a little bit about history and about politics and current events and culture. And I'm telling you, some of my best content is on the way. And so I'd really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on social media. Those are my handles. You can follow Jesse on social media. These are his handles. There are other ways to support Jesse's channel, including subscribing and other things down in the description box as well. Listen, it has been an honor to spend time with this community this week. Uh, you all are amazing. You've been so kind. I just want to take a few moments to say thank you. Thank you so much for being kind. Um, it is not um, guaranteed that a community will enjoy the guest host and will be kind to the guest host. It's not guaranteed, but that's the type of people that you are. And so I'm grateful that you are here, my friends. Until next time, peace.